Hi, this is Rick Bennett with Accordance, giving you a first look at the 28th edition of the Nestle Elan Greek New Testament. In this screencast, we'll briefly discuss some of the changes in the 28th edition, and the content included in the Accordance edition, along with a few tips on how to get the best use of it in Accordance. There are two main distinguishing features in the NA28. First is a completely revised apparatus, and second is a new reconstruction of the text in the Catholic epistles, namely James through Jude. For specific details on these changes, we recommend checking out nestle alancom and here you will find a description of the 20th edition, along with more details on the changes that were made in it. In accordance, we have divided this resource into three modules. First is the tag text with sigla. Second is the apparatus with introduction, in both English and German, and appendices. The apparatus is fully tagged with hyperlinks for every sign, manuscript, and abbreviation that contains a description in, the, in either the introduction or the appendices. Page numbers are also included for accurate citations and academic use. Appendix 1 is a list of all the major Greek and Latin witnesses cited in the apparatus, with a description of their contents and date. These are used as a basis for extensive hyperlinking throughout the apparatus. Appendix 2 is a list of the so-called minor variants. This is also fully tagged and cross-linked to the main apparatus itself. The third component are the notes in the outer margin, or as we're calling them, cross-references. The cross-references are included as a separate module that can be opened and arranged in parallel with a text and apparatus. All symbols and reference types are explained in the introduction, and when possible, are hyperlinked for intuitive use. Now that we've seen what's included, let's take a look at a couple of usage scenarios along with some tips on how to get the most out of using them. First, let's go to our display preferences for the apparatus. You can access this via Command T, or under the Display drop-down menu, select Set Tool Display. And what we recommend doing here is setting your default text for hypertext links to NA28-T for the, for the primary text, and LXX1 for the alternate text. This helps in identifying your precise place in the text, as well as quotations and references to the Septuagint. For this demo, I have two workspaces set up. The first one accesses the resources as separate modules, which has its advantages in certain situations. For example, the apparatus is designed like most books in accordance. You can disclose the tool browser to view your location in the module, as well as navigate to specific portions. You can also perform powerful searches utilizing our search fields or layers. If I'm reading the introduction to the edition and want to cite a portion of it, doing so is as easy as highlighting a portion of text and then copying and pasting it. You just select Copy as Citation. I can then switch over to my desired word processor and simply paste it in. And you can see here that it automatically inserts a footnote and cites it according to the, the preference that you have in accordance, either SBL or Turabian. In addition to being able to read this resource like a book, you can also perform some pretty advanced searches in it. In this case, I'm going to do a search where either the, the Greek words for Jesus or Christ are mentioned as a reading in the text, meaning it's a reading of one of the variation units. In this case, I've used wildcards so I can account for alternate endings. In this, I have 321 hits in different verses throughout the apparatus but I want to get a little more advanced here. I'm going to drop down and choose another field. And in the witnesses field, this is all of the different Greek, Latin, and different witnesses that are used. I'm going to enter in shift option P for the papyrus symbol and constrain this search to only places where there is a papyrus list, a manuscript listed in the same verse. So you can see here I have 271 hits and this shows me only those places where I've got a variant involving Jesus or Christ in the phrase and where there is a papyrus manuscript that either supports one reading or the other. In the next workspace, I have the text open with the apparatus and cross-references arranged in parallel panes. And to get a quick understanding of the text, I have also have my preferred English Bible open. The example I want to work from is 2 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. Before looking at the variants in more detail, I want to explain some of the design decisions we made in the apparatus and how they provide a more intuitive user experience. As a point of reference, here's a shot of the print edition with the relevant portions that we're looking at boxed in red. If we go back and compare that to accordance, you can see that the apparatus is broken up into paragraphs. 
based on the different variation units. In the print edition, these are all merged together to conserve space and separated by a vertical bar. In addition to breaking the paragraphs, we have also implemented context-aware hyperlinks in the text, meaning that if you are in a particular verse and you hover over a specific siglum, the apparatus will only display that variation unit in instant details. And I can also use the instant details popover to show this. You can see it only displays the first variation unit. If I go down to the second variation unit indicated by this other siglum here, option clicking on that only displays that variation unit in instant details. That's what I'm calling context aware. When working in the text, this provides a much more streamlined approach at viewing and analyzing the variant information. Now looking at the text, you may also notice the diamonds or the rhombus symbol. These are a new siglum introduced in the NA28, which are used to represent variants where the decision to adopt one reading over another involved a certain amount of ambiguity. And as we look through the different variants, we can see that they mostly involve minor variations in spelling or word order. If you look down at the end of the last variation unit, you'll notice this little right arrow. We inserted this into the text to indicate a place where there is further information in the minor variant listing in the appendices. In this case, it just indicates that there is one manuscript that has a slightly different reading, where there is one additional word that's omitted. Instead of navigating back and forth to the appendix to see if a passage is discussed, Accordon simplifies this into a simple hover of the mouse. As you can see, we have strived to design a version of the NA28 which gives you a research-grade representation of the original resource with the flexibility and power Accordance Makes makes possible. We hope you enjoy using this new standard resource in your study and research. Thanks for watching.